Welcome back, you amazing human being. This is the Real Estate Marketing Roundtable. Today, we're going to be talking about five plus ways for you to get business now. Now, why is this an important thing right now? Well, we're going to be coming up on the end of August. We're stepping to September. This is the 31st of uh, August that we're, we're recording the session. And now we're going to be talking about all kinds of creative things. You're going to have different websites, different concepts, different ways of getting in the right head, head space. We're going to talk about something called orphans i bet you don't know what an orphan is and no it's the not little little kid that's sitting on the street begging for change and some goulash it's we the, have a totally the, different take on this it's the beer that you left something to bottom in of oh, at a party that's <laughs> we can help orphan. out the little orphans on the streets too gregs <laughs> we do love them but that's not what we're talking about today guys and we got a whole lot more to cover plus if you guys like doing popeyes guess what we have something you can put into your business right now but until then here's your countdown Can I say something? No, please do. Yeah, I'm going to do it right now. I'm please do. It right do. Now. Please do. Oh, Nick's always, God. this is Nick's favorite part of the show because yep. he knows I'm going to pop off. I want to talk to you about Popeye's real quick. I'm more of a Wendy's chicken sandwich guy myself, but I think Popeye's. <laughs> Popeyes. Yeah, I think Popeye's stupid, is actually a, a good joke. sandwich. <laughs> we did not say Popeye's, Gino. We said uh, Popeye's. I know it's lunchtime, bro, but come on. <laughs> oh, I missed something. I'm, like, I'm with Wendy's, though. I'm, I'm 100%. We're, we're Wendy, Team Wendy's. I'm Team Wendy's. Social bro. media and food. Yeah. Can't. Yes, uh, you're correct, sir. Yeah. Okay, All you right. two chuckle huts. Sorry. Gene, I, guess we'll, I guess you'll have to explain to me also what Popeye's is. Maybe the cartoon. Maybe chicken sandwiches. Maybe popping by and giving somebody a gift. I don't know. Okay. Well, what is well, the title of the show? What are we talking about today again? We're doing five ways for business now. I'm so, not reading the title. Yes. Yes. Oh. Yes, I was it's five plus ways to get business now. That's okay. what we're talking about. So these are going to be Babarino aggressive ways. in the house. Oh my god, guys, shut the fuck up! I'm trying to get okay. through this thing. <laughs> Go ahead. God, it's like working with mo trained monkeys. All right, Jesus, <laughs> waiting for feces to be thrown at me through the screen. All right, let's start on this thing, guys. We have a couple of different segments. I'm going to take one, and we're going to talk about orphans, door knocking, and how to bring a different type of a person, like an insurance agent, with you. We're going to talk about the acronym SMILE, which we'll go over. Then pop buys, not pop eyes. Ah, Get pop your shit straight, okay? Pop um, and then How we're going to jump over to Sarge. We're going to talk about some headspace, uh, landing pages, all things kind of tech. Um, and we're going to go anywhere from handing out you know, business cards, you know, meeting people face to face, and kind of getting back up in, in, into people's grills so they actually know that you're still in the business after the pandemic has passed. So, Jake, I want to start with you because you were starting off with headspace. That's the number one place we need to jump off. If you're going to get business in, in the next 30 to 60 days, your head needs to be right. How do we start, Jake, in getting our head in the right place? Everything is about your attitude, ladies and gentlemen, your attitude. If you're going to make a change in your personal life or business life, you need to get your head right, period. You need to commit to it. Why, why are you doing this? Why did you get into this uh, business, this industry? So how bad do you want it? So many people start and stop and be uh, are inefficient with their day-to-day -day operations you have to go ahead and get right so commit to yourself first that you're going to go ahead and implement these things we're talking about today make the changes necessary to go ahead and be the champion for yourself you have to do it so have a personal meeting with yourself if you're going to want change it's up to you it's right there in between those two beautiful eyes of yours right in here and it's definitely in here so how bad do you want it don't go half ass into anything commit and go and stay on the throttle and charge hard that's uh the most important place to go ahead and start this show so yeah yeah flush I the couldn't. toilet with all of the energy vampires get rid of the negative energy gino is doing the thing again I, what in the hell is gene doing <laughs> i was having a meeting with myself i was, I was listening to what he was telling me if i was executing on thrashing. what he was just talking about if you yeah. guys didn't know, if you guys are just listening to our voices on iTunes or something like that or Spotify, Gene has his, his back turned to us. And he was like, look at you. He's like, like beating something in the background. He, he likes to do Sarge reenactments. 
Oh my god, I love my <laughs> that, my, that my special friends. That reminded me of a stand-up special Zach Galifianakis did, where he literally did a whole stand-up special in a nightclub, and he didn't face the audience. He had his back turned the whole time. <laughs> that sounds about right. Go on YouTube, look it up. It's absolutely brilliant. So good. I've never seen anybody do that before. But good on you. All right, yeah. so let's do this. Okay, we're in a, we're in a positive headspace. We're ready to rock forward. Uh, Jake, next. I want to go directly into landing pages. Why are they important? What do we need to do with them? Actionable ideas that people can use right now. Yeah. So if we're going to get into the tech side of the space, landing pages, the one-off landing pages, your click funnels landing pages, your personal landing pages, your Sam cart landing pages, some place to receive people online and then get advertising. Advertising is going to push people back to your message, whatever that is. So what's that, whatever is on that place, that landing page, that website, that zone, uh, that's very important. Video is necessary. So if you don't have at least one video on there, you're already failing. Have some video on there, at least to do an introduction for yourself, but you have to have some online space. And ye who is not advertising or advertising like this is going to fail. So you need to now in these types of times, more so than ever, you need to invest more into advertising dollars to push your message out to a new audience so that more people can go ahead and hit those landing page spaces. So if that's not implemented into your business, it should be online. It's critical. Okay, that's awesome. I love that to pieces. I'm gonna talk about something really quickly, guys, that'll probably a lot of you guys may or may not know. I um, I asked a couple of agents and pretty much none of them knew what this topic was. So take out this thing, it's an old fashioned, it's called a writing device. You can put it onto a piece of paper like said so, and you can make little scribbles that are called words. They turn into you know sentences, they turn into paragraphs, they turn into ideas. So please take notes. So have anyone, you know, Nick, I asked you pre-show, have you ever heard of what, what an orphan lead is? And I said, no, it's kind of like the same way that I would, if somebody said, hey, do you know so-and-so? And I would say no. And then they send me a picture of him and I go, oh yeah, I know that guy. <laughs> so I, I didn't know what you meant initially, but then when we started talking about it, I go, <laughs> Yeah, I know. And we actually do that for our business. So uh, let's elaborate on that because I think it's a really good tactic that not everybody does and they probably should. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. So here it is, guys. Orphans are incredibly easy. Now you have two different types of or orphans. You have orphans in your CRM and they have orphan neighborhoods. So let's break the differences down. They are all around you. Okay. They are everywhere. You swim through these like you swim through a body of water. Orphans are the people that have sold between five and seven years ago. And then these are not your clients. Okay. They can be your clients, but go to your title company, request a list of every property in your communities that, that you get, you know, you can either map out or zip codes or cities or counties or whatever you want to do that have sold in the last five to seven years. Then you start a marketing campaign to these folks. You get that list, right? Then you shoot it on over to likely.ai. Then they're going to rank that list of who most likely people to sell in the next 90 days are. Then you start an aggressive campaign with clever leads and you're able to uh, really get down to the nitty gritty on the people who maybe Nick Sackis and the Sackis team rec represented them, you know, six and a half years ago, but hasn't stayed in contact. Now, that's not the case. Nick always stays in contact. OK, hypothetically. Now, Gene, on the other hand, we know he doesn't follow up. OK, he, he's the evil bald ninja. He just slices <laughs> and dices. Um, but in all reality, you go and you get that you get that list. So go to the county or uh, go to the title. Or if you're, an attorney, if you're an attorney state, go to your attorney, get a list of the people who have sold the last five to seven years. Get those folks, just those, likely.ai, analyze the list. If you like the data, buy the list, upload the list over to uh, Jake and, uh, and Clever and let them start a campaign based upon your budget. Um, those are the orphans. Now, here's the really fun one. Orphan neighborhoods. Now, do you guys have, do you guys know what an orphan neighborhood is? No. <laughs> Please tell me. <laughs> when gene gives me that evil snicker like, <laughs> i just, well, I just, yeah, I I'm just want to know if you want me to answer that or not yeah i want you to answer no, it I'm not going to insult anybody go ahead all right or oh, shut up um so orphan neighborhoods are very simple a lot of the folks in you know around the country there are a lot of newer developments that have gone up in the last three to five years now the uniquely interesting part about this is that uh, there are some agents that are going to be target, targeting those newer homes, but on average, people who buy new homes resell them within three to five years. This is based upon an article that I read from Inman, and then I know they will not print anything that is not legit and verifiable. I know that because I wrote for them for about a year. 
I didn't write. I did videos, but that I digress. <laughs> <laughs> you me writing, it's like crayons and like three different colors, and that's what the article you'd get from me. But what you do is you take a new development that maybe was built three years ago, and then you start putting maybe geofences on, door knocking, cold calling, you know, going around and inviting people to community barbecues at the community at the community center. You, of course, you're going to be putting on the you know flipping the bill for it, uh, doing kids bounce houses during summer nights, doing movie nights in the, in the park or in the community area or the rooftop or whatever it is, all sponsored by you. So you have this, the the orphans that live in your database, right? Then you have the orphan neighborhoods, two powerful opportunities for you have the opportunity to snatch up the low hanging fruit that agents just don't, it, it's literally in front of you, but you just don't see it because you haven't been trained to look for it. That's the distinguishing difference. Once your brain turns on, you're like, oh, fuck, it's been right here the whole time. I could go right over this new development and I could start door knocking these communities and really start meeting new folks that moved into the area and might need to know more about the area. It's a phenomenal idea. I just pat myself on the back with a big rubber arm. Oh, good. Job, Thank you. <laughs> nice. Um, and the third oh, orphan. What's the third one? That's the one that we use, which is, let's say you have a listing. That listing sells. Now, you would contact, you would keep in contact normally with the people that you listed the house for, correct? Mm -hmm. That's part of your database. What about the new buyers that moved into your listing? Oh, that's right. So yeah. what we do is at every closing, there's a company it's called, I'll put in the comments, uh, the personal touch marketing, the personal marketing company. There you go. They have an automated program you can set up for $25 that will automatically mail postcards and a little lifestyle kind of magazine to those people without you even thinking about it for five years to keep in touch with the people that just bought your recent listing. So wait, hold on. Nine hold times up. out of 10, the person, the people who bought your listing is not going to be followed up with by the agent that helped them. So mm -hmm. you are now in front of them and they now become mm -hmm. your client. So wait, is it $25 a year? Or is it $25 one time? One pay? time set up $25. Forget it. Good to and go for five no years. More fees. No more fees. Like it's zilch. Zero. It is not none. Dead easy, no brainer. After every transaction, you should be setting every one of your clients up on both sides of the deal on Hell that yes. personal touch. Now let's back that up. There could be repercussions if you're marketing to another person, another, another, you know, another, another agent's clients, but legally now check with your attorneys, check with your state, check with your board, check with your, 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 your broker. Um, but if they're not what under are the contract, repercussions, what, that's what I'm saying, like just politically in the real estate realm, like, like if you started marketing to my, you know, clients, you know, Jake Wolf and Serenity Wolf after they bought my listing and I found out about it, about it and like, oh, yo, bro, like Greg McDaniel, the guy that, you know, was the the listing guy, um, he uh, he sent in this stuff. So to put it into context, it is a small world. My mom's been in business since 1991. I've had my license since 05. Mm -hmm. We've been doing this abandoned orphan, whatever you want to call it solid for the past 12 years ish 10 plus years never gotten a phone call from another agent say what are you doing sending my <laughs> clients something all right but we have go. gotten calls from people saying come list our house our agent never followed up with us we mm -hmm. like this magazine that you've been sending us i want to be in your neighborhood i want to get your magazine yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's nothing what? it's it's not rocket science right you're not even it's not even something you're creating it's not anywhere near as hard as what Gene Volpe would tell you to do as far as doing TikTok videos and Instagram yeah. and social media and all that shit. Right? This is a this is a dead stupid easy way to make sure you don't miss something. I like Ooh. that, Nick. I, I like the fact that yeah. people have put their past clients into an orphan status and they don't do that good and follow up and um, brand awareness. So having something like that is critical. I really like that. I mean, if it's as good as you say, and I don't I don't doubt a word you ever that ever comes out of your mouth, it probably is. That's a hell of I mean, for 25 bucks for five freaking years. I'm not I mean, getting paid by them. There's no affiliate marketing, nothing like that. I just put it in the comments. So if you want to look at it's tpmco.com. Put that in the, uh, put that in the notes. tpmco.com. God, I hate being dyslexic. I'm like, A, B, C, D, what, what? Well, you just um, messed up everybody who's driving and was trying to remember it. Yeah. Great. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's sign up for the magazine. So she's we're asking there what's the and there it is. This is the link right there. TPMCO.com. 
Oh, okay. Next idea. Um, Hold on, before we get there, can oh. we, can we, there's, a, there's a break in the show. We want to do it. I want to do this version, this week's version of uncomfortable conversations with Greg McDaniel, courtesy, <laughs> courtesy of Veronica Jones. So if you could just share my screen there real quick. <laughs> oh my God, Go ahead, Greg, do it again. Awesome. <laughs> Veronica <laughs> is the best. For the folks that are that are listening, it says uncomfortable conversations with Greg McDaniel. Here is the fun one: orphan neighborhoods. <laughs> <laughs> She's the best. <laughs> I just want to uh, say Veronica Vaughn because yeah. just Im immediately when I hear Veronica, it's so, such a rare name <laughs> that I want to think about Veronica Vaughn from Billy Madison. Hey, Veronica, send me that, and I'm gonna we're gonna use that on a daily show on every show that we do, and we're gonna do all right, guys. We're taking a break from our typically scheduled broadcast to bring awkward conversations with Greg McDaniel. Then some cool music. I I can't wait for that. That's like the old Saturday Night Live, Saturday Night Back Live, when they broke into um, like uh -huh. hired yeah. expectations. Or remember Deep Thoughts. Deep Thoughts. Deep thoughts. Jack Handy. Will, Will Ferrell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're digressing on a quick, so. quick, quick, rapid track here. Um, let's, let's jump into this, guys. Um, this is something that I did a number of years ago. A gentleman by the name of uh, Sean Smith, uh, who now is actually my insurance broker personally, uh, he hit me up because I, he saw my YouTube videos from How to Door Knock. And so he watched the videos. And he, and he's like, if this clown can door knock, I can door knock. So he hit me up. He was living over in the peninsula like uh, Burlingame, San Mateo, that kind of area, right, where Apple is and Facebook. Um, and so he drove all the way over. We went door knocking together. Now, what the, the actual title on this is bring something of value. Well, I didn't bring something of value. I brought a person of value that's not typical when you go door knocking. Everyone's like, well, I'm going to bring a lender. Yeah, that's really cool, but it's not exciting and different. Now, Sean, the funny part about Sean, he's six foot five, about my size, a little bit heavier, a little bit, you know, he's built, he's a like trained fighter, you know, in jujitsu. And uh, we were door knocking. He was scared. He's shaking like a leaf in a, you know, windstorm. And I'm like, Sean, just relax, man. I'll show you how to do this. So we rang the doorbell and this guy squared off. Okay. He was ready to fight. Like he went sideways on him, like in defensive. I'm like, whoa, whoa. We're here to help them, not kill them. Jesus, <laughs> criminy. I'm like, just face forward. The long story of the short is, is that on that day, we door knocked probably maybe 30 plus houses. One is a long, wasn't a long day of door knocking. He picked up three clients he still has today. One of them saved, so I saved 1200 one saved 2500 one saved, saved $800 a year on the insurance shift over to him. And guess who they are associated that savings with? This dude. So mm -hmm. door knock with someone of value, not something of value. Everyone does something of value, but what if I bring someone of value? Maybe it could be a landscape architect. If you give you an estimation on what it would cost to do ABC around the yard that you've been looking to do, maybe bring a junk hauler to give a discounted quote on if you wanted some, you know, spring cleaning or just clean out the, the, the yard or whatever it is, bring someone of value not something of value. Of course, always bring a flyer or your cards or something like that. But that's something that I have found to be incredibly successful uh, in my business. And it's also beneficial to build relationships with other businesses. So if you have a cupcake maker, good, have a cupcake or cake maker go with you. Just say, hey, look, we're offer offering a 25% discount. If you work with Greg McDaniel, we'll give you this for life. There you go. Talk about every kid that would just be like, are you kidding me, mom? We get you know twenty discount on cupcakes. Heck yeah! I Heck tried yeah. doing that one time, Greg. I actually Even brought cookies? some of the Girl Scouts with, but the problem was, is I ate all the cookies before they could sell them. <laughs> <laughs> it's like man, this dude, this wagon's getting real light real quick. <laughs> this is so weird. <laughs> um, okay, so that's one of mine. Let's go on to our next one. Uh, Jake, do you want to take the next one? You know, it's right in line with what you're talking about as far as getting out and meeting somebody. I think now it's very important, right? We're talking about different styles of orphans, people that we should be speaking to, outreaching to. But um, guys, we're congregating again. Congratulations in the United States. And mm -hmm. it is extremely effective to meet new people, shake hands, have conversations and and whatever. But uh, your BNIs, your local groups, um, getting into any niche organizations that you're part of in your local area. But I want to urge people to find that new person that you haven't met yet. At least daily, you should be meeting somebody new and saying hi. Start with one. 
and then push yourself up from there. I think that that's extremely critical to be putting into business right now. Instead of just passing by like two ships in the night at mm -hmm. the grocery store, maybe start a conversation with somebody, ask somebody how they're doing. Um, small talk a little bit, get into conversations, push yourself out of that comfort zone. So we've been spending the last two years behind computer screens like this, zooming yeah. in and zooming out of everybody's lives and hiding the most common form of communication now is text. We are texting our family, friends, and everybody else, right? So have the conversation on the phone. You can do this. And also when you're out there in public, go ahead and make sure that you're uh, speaking to somebody new every day. Yeah. Can I, let me, can I put on top of that? I finally, you're going to speak. God, I thought you had a gag ball in. You just weren't saying anything. Oh, gag ball. Gosh, <laughs> I mean, I can't even. <laughs> did you just say gag ball? Yeah. He did. Because if he said that? the other way, if he said the right terminology, he, he, everybody would have been shocked. Longer. So the bow on the show for today is going to be our safe words instead of a color. <laughs> yeah, safe words. <laughs> this is real estate uncensored. Uh, um, I so knew I, I would be shaking my head. Listen, at some Sarge just texted show. me on the side. He said to make sure you knew it was a ball gag, not a gag ball. <laughs> so, and I don't, and I, I don't know how Sarge would know that, but whatever. Um, Meeting throwing new me people. into the hot water. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, what he just said is really is super important. And I and I I think back, you guys have seen one of my business partners, Brian, Captain mm -hmm. Link Juice, they call him. When we get on when we get on the line with our our loan officers, one of the things we do when we talk about prospecting is we're like, look, you're gonna make your your cold calls, right? So let's just say for an argument's sake, you know you need to make 10 calls a day to get lunch with one person next week. Mm -hmm. Right. What if your goal was to set up one lunch per day, every day, next week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, that's five people a week over a 52 week period is 260 new conversations, personal interactions. And, and what Brian says, Brian goes, and I love the way he says it's super cash. It's like, yo, Nick, I'm, I'm just inviting you to lunch. No hard sell. I promise you. I'm, I want to buy you lunch. We both have to eat lunch. If we decide that we can help each other in some way. Fantastic. If not, we just move along and we had a great lunch together. No big deal. So if you just take 260 people across that year that you eat and meet for lunch, and if you are so inclined, you, you do it for coffee as well. That's 520 people across the year, just working Monday through Friday. If you pull 10% of that or 5%, let's say, that's of those people that are going to give you new business, 10% of 260 is 26 new people. So like in yeah. my world, if I'm a real estate agent and I can pull 26 new listings out of lunch, or in your case, maybe two listings per person. Uh, you know what I mean? Like there's a way to do that. But going back to what Sarge said, this is hand-to-hand -hand combat again, right? And and I used his terminology. I know he liked that. We're always shooting bullets down range. There's a lot of hand-to-hand -hand combat. We're getting in the weeds. We're carrying telephone poles. But at the end of the day, you need face-to-face -face interaction with folks. That's where it comes down to. These text messages, the landing pages, all of these things that we talk about are conversation starters. Uh, we need to get the horse to water, right? That's how we do it. And then when we get there, how do you convince them to drink? And right. that's through your personality and timing and all these other things. But make a plan to have lunch four or five times a week for the rest of the year. And you're going to be not hungry. You'll be happy probably. And you'll have new clients, I guarantee it. Yeah, the 26, I mean, the 26 deals. I mean, let's say you do uh, a quarter of that initial number that's 32 deals that's i mean you're living that's a great lifestyle right there depending on how much you really want to be working so you know divide that by 12 and that's 2.7 deals almost three deals a month that you're 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 plenty busy at that at that level and if you want to scale you can scale and really go there now my next idea is it's a joke i just thought about when i was when i was thinking here and i'm probably going to be shot in and uh tarred and feathered in the middle of the town square but what if you did? What if you uh, was were the sponsor of some uh, divorce support groups? Target <laughs> target market. Yeah, I'm saying. I mean, Let's another another, another that thing or thing divorce about. or or really going after divorce attorneys. I don't think it's a terrible yeah. idea. But people that are getting divorced in a lot of cases need to sell their house, and the attorney yeah. doesn't get paid until that is settled. So the attorney wants to get it off the plate. You make good friends with divorce attorneys. That's a good way to do it too. Why not? It is. I was looking at um, so a long a while back. I was I was um, uh, we were talking about custom tennis balls. You can you know go buy 
a thousand of them or five thousand of those bitches and then throw like 20 of them in every park dog park around the area so that your brand is on all the you know slobbery and that those balls will change hands at least seven times through the life of the dog ball i thought of another one since two out of the four of the individuals here on this show are in florida now in florida you have a lot of things most of them try to kill you this one doesn't it's called the golf golf courses sponsoring golf events i went and looked at custom golf towels that you can put your brand on they cost 68 cents per towel these things are like microfiber super nice you know come with the hook thingamabobber dude you can go you can go sponsor all the different golf events and give every single cart to uh different tag uh, you know towels dude i have so many towels on my golf bag because they're free and i want to you know i, I want to dry my balls highly um, leveraged golf. Touch point, what yeah. Balls, right? So, like, what are balls? Yeah, yeah. Handling Greg's balls. It's highly. <laughs> We're talking but, about golf balls. You sickles. so like that's that's good on multiple fronts, right? Golf course communities typically higher upper echelon luxury style, right? There's not too many public golf courses with hundred fifty thousand dollars houses on them. They're they're usually a higher echelon customer, if you will. Um, the same thing happens right now at when I drop my kid off at school and pick him up. The car tag that's in the window is sponsored by one of the local dentists. Every single car that comes in the car circle from the company or from the school has that hanging up in their car every single day. And I got to look at this dentist face and number every time I hang this thing up on my car. It's brilliant. It's a high touch, high leveraged um, point. Same thing like the divorce attorney. Instead of worrying about, so here's something you could do this year for the rest of the year and figure it out for 2023. Instead of worrying about how you're going to sell 30 individual houses next year, why don't you focus on how you can have five key relationships that will give you five deals each? Oh, that's a good idea, Nick. That's a good idea. Right? So like your touch point is much smaller. You build a relationship with a very select few of people. We talk about Orphan. This is where your VIP database list comes in, right? We talk about database all the time, having just a central place where all your people live. But do you have a VIP list? Do you have a list inside of your database of the top 10% of people that you love on even more that you give even more attention to that you have the coffee and the lunches with on a, on a monthly basis that give you multiple deals per year that support your business that you spend more time with? That's yeah. that highly leveraged. And I love the golf towel idea too. It's a good one. Yeah, dude. I, what I was thinking about was totally, you know, I went sideways on it because I uh, the other day the dog park that we go to was that it, it's literally in a cloud in Noe Valley like it like Noe Valley sits in a cloud majority of the time, and so it, you know, Rupert got just covered in mud and thank the day before I had learned my lesson I had to go back down and clean the car because he made it into a swamp in the back seat, so this time I brought a towel with me, so what I thought about was hmm what if and then there's a lot of ways to go sideways on this but what if you were to spend some time at the dog park one to three times a day walk on the old hooch. And and you hand out towels to every person around there. Hey, when it's muddy, here's a towel to clean your dog's paws. Here's a dog, you know, clean, here's a couple to clean some stuff around the house. You hand these towels out, they're gonna stick around, especially if they're good quality. You know, put them in the car so that all only they think about when the doggy gets in and it's covered in sand or mud or whatever, you're there to help them. I tell you what, WeatherTech makes some really good custom seat covers for, to go ahead and throw on your seat to protect from the dogs for situations like that. You might want to check it out. Say that again. WeatherTech. WeatherTech. Yeah. All right. Weather T E. Or just you know what I say? Don't get a dog. Oh, <laughs> you know I mean? bitches, please. Uh -oh. You don't have to worry about it. No, oh, look at look. Rupert, look, close look, your look ears, buddy. Face. Yeah, Rupert. <laughs> Come over here. No. I want to tell you something, Rupert. <laughs> hey, Rupert, Rupert just cries, Rupert. <laughs> hey, no, shut up you I'm, I'm gonna kick all of your all asses now there's there's a, there's a topic and an idea to get business very very quickly jake we haven't touched on the one of the biggest opportunities to bring value to in your, in your to your community and to your future leads now it has 18 wheels and it goes down a thing called a road what yeah. would that be so a unique selling proposition is important to have that's something that differentiates you from your competitor Free to Move USA is a wonderful program to get certified with to go ahead and offer ten to twenty five thousand dollars in savings to anybody that's planning on buying or selling with you. So they can come check with you first before talking to somebody else, find out how much they can save on on a move. And uh, it's very critical. So if you have a unique selling proposition, whether you're part of the Free to Move movement or something else of value, 
personal or financial value that you can offer in a unique selling proposition. What you need to do to get business is get busy, get on the phone and call everybody up, have them come check with you first. If they know of anybody, friends, family, loved ones, neighbors who are planning on making a move, have them come check with you first. And that way you can tell them about your unique selling proposition. So um, instant offers, whatever that is, any type of financial or personal benefit to somebody it gives them the why why should they use you in business so that's critical yeah yeah you know, but the, the, the freedom move usa guys is something that i can personally attest to the power of it um now this was i moved my girlfriend she sold her house i don't know four or five months ago something like that i don't know the, move, the months fly by too quickly and uh, i moved her from her house using freedom move, move usa I cut up to 70% off of the cost of the move. I got two trucks, three dudes to move. And these guys, I don't, I think they must lift like thousand pound weights when they just, when they wake up in the morning, these guys were carrying <laughs> massive ass boxes as fast as they could move. They were running at some points with like three boxes strapped behind them. Like, what's this like a mutant show? What the fuck is happening here? But they got us out loaded in in a, and, and unloaded within an hour and a half to two hours it was insane to watch so check it out i have had multiple deals other worse than my girlfriend's deal that they hit me up i advertised for that and people are like wait a minute what's the catch i'm like the only catch is you just press hard on the listing contract there's three copies and we go to work for you that's the only catch there's i mean everything's up front there's no hidden anything you know open door just got sued for 62 million dollars which they paid immediately for defrauding the public that's not what us and everyone listening to this show. We're not defrauding anybody. We're up front. We'll tell you exactly what's up. End of story. All right. Uh, Gene and Nick, thoughts and theories in regards to the Freedom Move USA. How would you market this? Um, if you're just hearing this for the first time, you're like, what in the heck are these lunatics talking about? How can I even broach this conversation with the community and my and my client base? Gene, Talk go to you. Or Nick. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, listen, I was going to let Nick do it because... Uh... <laughs> I think he might even be participating and helping. It's well, yeah, so about it. let people. So know I want to. I want to go back to how, like, we hear unique selling proposition is important. We talk about it all the time, but from the context, I want you to think about how crazy this sounds. You get all excited. You have a regular job. You might be doing something else. You hear about real estate, and you're like, "I'm going to get into real estate and get my time freedom and make a bazillion dollars and not have a boss anymore." Mm -hmm. And you get your license and you're all excited and you interview with different brokers and you finally get your seat at whatever brokerage you're with. And then you're sitting there and you're going, ah, oh, I can't wait for all this business to come to me. <laughs> okay. And Sorry. a couple months go by and you start talking to people and you're like, how the fuck do I actually get any business? I need to mm -hmm. pay my mortgage next month. What's going on without any real thought as to what are you actually offering people? And then you go to some meetings and the broker tells you, you should be doing this and you should be offering that. And here's your free listing presentation that we offer everybody. And it's the same thing that all the other 400 agents in your office are doing. And then you start copying people and doing exactly what they're doing. If I told you that I was going to quit my job tomorrow and open up a cheeseburger restaurant. Okay. And your friend said, Hey, that's a good idea. Everybody likes cheeseburgers. What are you going to serve at that cheeseburger restaurant? And I handed you a menu that was an exact duplicate of the McDonald's fucking drive through menu. You would <laughs> go, well, this is the same shit the McDonald's already has. They're already doing this down the street in every location across the country. Why would I come eat your cheeseburger? In five seconds, your friend would go, that's a stupid idea. Maybe you should keep your job. I don't think that's going to make you a lot of money, right? But when you get into real estate, everybody goes, yeah, you're going to make a shitload of money. That sounds great. Go, yeah, perfect. Great idea. And then you have nothing unique to offer. So mm -hmm. instead of offering the same McDonald's cheeseburger that everybody at your brokerage has, you need to figure out what your special sauce is. And your special sauce is your unique selling proposition. And I promise you that every big team in your market or expanding outside of your market has a special sauce that they offer that you don't. And it's the difference between why 100 transactions a year versus one transaction a year. Obviously, the back end and everything else that goes into it logistically. But you got to have something that captures the customer's attention. You got to have something that your repeat and referral clients are going to go. You got to talk to Nick because he's not like 
the McDonald's Happy Meal. He's got mm. special sauce, right? It's very, very important. <laughs> so many jokes on that. He's so got many special jokes. sauce. But you get what I'm saying. It, like, it's that important. There's only two things, your database and your unique selling proposition. Like, everything else falls into place. Figure fucking everything else out. How many people do you know that can already do business with you? And what are you offering them? Yeah, I think that is a really good thing. Identify that one thing. For me, dude, I'm in common with people who love dogs. Jake loves dogs. Nick's li Nick likes cats. Gene is a huge goldfish fetish. Fetish. I mean, it's really weird. I mean, fetish. and turtles, turtles, dude. and turtles. Get the turtle. But I, I want to bring up something that May wrote uh, up here, and I, I I've been reading her comment, and I really think it's a powerful comment because. I've never heard anybody phrase it like this. So she, what she writes, quote, instead of asking your friends and family if they know anyone who's wanting to make a move or purchase a home, ask them um, if there's been any lifestyle changes, a.k.a. pregnancy, death, divorce, job transfer, empty nester, et cetera. May, that is, that is the my takeaway from this show. That is a oh. fucking awesome little Yo. twist. Isn't that badass? I love that. Well, you know why? Because again, going back to the special sauce stuff and the, every what every other agent does is, you know, anybody who's looking to make a move. <laughs> exactly. I feel like an idiot saying that. Well, she asked the same thing. She just flipped it on its head a little bit, right? Yeah. So, who do you know that uh, has had a major life life change style or li lifestyle change? You know, someone got pregnant. I mean, unfortunately, somebody passed. Uh, you know, my grandfather passed recently. So, I mean, that could be a conversation. Divorce, job transfer, empty nesters. <laughs> You know, whatever, fill in the blank. Listen, you know what I love about real estate is that you can have a unique service proposition and not even know a shitting thing about it. You just got to know how to spin it and who to go to talk to, right? So this Freedom Move USA, I've been hearing about it for a year. I don't know what it is. You know what? Don't care. Here's why. You need to move your shit for 60%, 40%, 20%. I probably, I got a guy and they go, well, how does how do you get the trucks? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? <laughs> it's not me that does it. Right. Like, I don't I have no idea if somebody came to me and said, how, how do you get your how do you get your house sold? I, I call the experts I bring in a real estate agent. Like, I know how to do it. I'm not doing it myself. Right. So you don't even you know, we do this mortgage stuff, this cash to keys stuff. Right. We've been talking about that for a couple of months. This is how you start the conversation. Hey, are you getting beat out and by offers in this in this market right now? Because people are coming in with cash. This was, a little, you know, two months ago. Right. And you can still use it in certain ge geographies. But are you getting beat out because you're not coming to the table with a cash offer? What if I told you we had a new program called Cash to Keys and I could put you in a position to be a cash offer? We could waive contingencies. Well, somebody called me and said, what contingencies could we waive? I go, I don't know. I got to talk to my mortgage guy. Right? I'm not the guy that does that shit. Talk to the mortgage guy. But I got your attention and I grabbed the conversation. Yeah. That's, that's what I want to do. So I don't even need to know anything about it. Like, hey, you want us to, want us to geofence? What do they call that? Fencing geos? What is it? My buddy does is all this fencing geos. He's putting fences up around geos. I don't even know what it means, but I can get you in touch with him. Call me. I'll, I'll work on it with you. Like, what's the geo fencing? I don't fucking know, but Nick does, right? It's like, I love that element of it. I have people call me all the time. I, matter of fact, I'll give you a perfect example. I had a father of one of my daughter's friends call me. We're, we're close. We've been, we've known them since they've been going to school. So 10 years now. And he calls me and he goes, do you know any commercial real estate agents? in your, in your area that you trust. And I go, I do actually, I have two of them. And I gave him the name. They called him. This was two months ago. They want to sell a $4 million piece of commercial property. Right. Jeez. So I call, I call this commercial guy who happens to be my wife's fifth cousin, whatever they connect them. The guy's wife grabs me last night at an event. And she's like, thank you so much for doing that for Tom. And I'm like, what did I do for Tom? And she's like, you hooked him up with that name you had. And I go, oh, shit. I'm like, I didn't even remember, right? She goes, as I'm turning away, she goes, you know, I still have no idea what you do for a living, but I know to call you when I need something. <laughs> and I go, that's all you need to know. I don't care what it is, like, right? Because well, where she did, called where me did and she said, grab you? We were oh. <laughs> the, Nick, if you the knew reach, Laura, reach around payback. She's no, no, no. She's a wild <laughs> woman. She would have kicked me before she grabbed me. But um, <laughs> she grabbed when I said grab me, she grabbed me to talk yeah, to me at an yeah, event yeah. we were at, right? In a very professional, professional way. Very Just professional. Dino likes it. Just, right, yes, yeah. <laughs> well, there were a bunch of kids around. I was at a school event. Like, we don't I don't need to mess with that shit. I get enough trouble as it is. But my point <laughs> there is that it's all about the conversation. At that point, if she would have called and said, Hey, my husband Tom needs marketing help. Do you know anybody? I'd go, Yeah, that's what I do, right? 
But if she says something, you know, just going to move shit. I need a truck somewhere. Oh, that's what Jake does. Call Jake. And Jake, I got somebody reaching out to you. I'll put you both on a text message. That's the connection. I want people calling me for whatever it is, whether I do it or not, and start to have that conversation. Yeah. You know, that, that leads us into um, probably one of our latter parts of this show, since we'll be going for 40 plus minutes. I'm going to go over really, really quickly, and then I want everybody to jump in, kind of give me your thoughts and opinions. Um, Otis is saying that um, getting good with the attorneys, uh, because the judge will appoint um, the client uh, an agent if the if the husband and wife can't agree. So get on those lists, ladies and gentlemen, ASAP. Otis, thank you, man. Phenomenal piece of content right there. The Ackerman... I want to go over a little, uh, little unknown piece of information it stands for smile now this is something i haven't heard now this is again an article i i picked up uh from inman by i can't i don't know who the article is uh daryl davis wrote this and this is a great idea is smile this is what it stands for s service m meet face to face i invite a conversation l leave a small gift or of gratitude e Elevate the relationship. That's SMILE. So the acronym uh, S-M-I-L-E stands for, again, service, meet face-to-face, -face, invite a conversation, leave a small gift of gratitude behind, elevate the, uh, elevate the relationship. That, that means taking them from like a C on your ABCD list of quality on where you need to concentrate with them. Elevate that. Bring it. Bring them up into someone that you could bring value and pour into, where they have an opportunity to pour into you, and you guys can work collaboratively to get more deals, uh, maybe for their business and your business. So there's a lot of opportunity right there. And then finally, when it comes to elevating the relationship or leaving something behind, I want you guys to go to a website. It's popbyideas.com. Now, popbyideas.com is something that when you're going to leave something uh, behind, you can go by the different seasons in the year. So we're in technically the end of summer, and then we're going to be coming into fall, right? So you can go in and click on fall, and you can look at all the opportunities and different things that you might want to order, you know, you know, a couple of things to do Popeyes on that are applicable for that time of year. They should be able to give you a script. You can order some additional stuff from there. I found it to be incredibly interesting. So you don't have to worry about what to say, what to bring. It's already done for you. All you have to do is go to pop by ideas. Can one of you guys put it up on the uh, put it up in the chat real quick so I can put it up for everybody as I'm talking? I want to something. I'm, I want to cut the middleman out. Can I cut the middleman out? God, yeah. My God, just leave me a Popeye's chicken sandwich on my doorstep. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you got to do. I'll sell my house tomorrow. My wife don't even have to know about it. <laughs> How it? it's gotta be chicken but there's gotta be cheese on it there has to be cheese oh, okay. cheese on the okay. chicken huh are you yeah, a cheese bro, on the apple no pie would they put cheese on apple pies that's a oh, soft thing that's not oh better, hell better no cheese on apple pie Hold i think on. i just threw up in my mouth a little yeah. bit you want to have, have a good time with cheese put it on your baked potato next time oh, yes. that's good yeah talk about starch and fat all in one good place and then put some you know bacon on that bitch mm -hmm. all right, all right. elevating your value it ties right back to what gene was saying be the guy that knows a guy like be that's one of the most valuable things guy. that you can have that you can have right that's what we talk about having vendor lists always having good solid vendors so every time somebody if they know to call you because you know the sprinkler guy or the hvac guy or the electrician or the pool guy like being the guy that knows a guy is very valuable it is. Gene's it one is. of them. Gene, what was the comment I just saw? Gene, me, lean, Gene, what the fuck was it? Somebody just mean put Gene, the connection machine. The connection machine. I like that. That's Big Bob Abrams. That's who that yeah. is. <laughs> nice, Bob. Way to go. Yeah. Stepping it up for, for the old bald ninja it's over there. It's my guy out of Boca Raton, Florida. Boca Raton. Eh? You see what I'm saying? Huh? Oh, are, you, are you drinking fucking Jack Daniels? Uh, no. What it's is that? Relief Ice too. Unsweetened. Oh, <laughs> I'm like, I was like you got a, you got a set this on savage you. just take a swig of Jack Daniels without even, <laughs> without even no. flinching, just like, Ugh, nah, it's just like water. Oh, oh my god, unsweetened iced tea is boring. That boring gene today for for work time. All right, I give a vendor list to my community, uh, new people in my community. Absolutely, 100%. Tony, I think that's another great idea. Go to every single property. Wait maybe one month after they've moved in so you're not horning in like the day they're moving into the house. 
um, and bring them, hey, you know what? I had the property listed. I know you guys are new to the area. Here's a list of a lot of vendors that might be of value to you. Of course, you have your brand on every single page, upside down and backwards, well bound, and you give it to them as a gift. Is that kind of what you're talking about? Nick? That's yes. exactly what he's talking about. Yeah. Okay, good. I'm like, yeah. uh, um, all right. I was, I was reading this thing comments. on. I was reading the other comments. My bad. <laughs> okay. Let's do some takeaways, gentlemen. Um, Jake, I want to start with you. Uh, give me some takeaways from today's show, thoughts, theories, and concerns. So, a couple things I want to discuss. It's always on my mind and my heart is urge you all to look at your calendar. If you're not working a calendar, get it into your business practice. Look for times and up op for opportunities where you can go ahead and apply yourself, apply more things to your business, work the calendar, use the calendar, make it part of who you are, a living, a living document. So, and then have that meeting with yourself at the end of the day, analyze your relationships, conversations, activities, and business, see what you could have improved, see where you did awesome and look for those opportunities to go ahead and implement more. Um, once your calendar gets full, then that's the time to find somebody else to assist and help uh, buy back some of your time circle prospecting right now i think it's going to be really really critical again um so get out there and do it get circle prospecting around past listings current listings things along those lines uh, i've always seen a benefit in it one of the things that i want to talk to people about as my takeaway of the day is if a business is not advertising you're you're not as well as the companies who are. I don't want to say that you're failing, but it's important to advertise. And uh, pre-pandemic, when markets were awkward and things were starting to come down and we started to come into it, we urged everybody to go ahead and advertise more, double down. And those that did succeeded. And I think we're kind of coming into that same realm. So it's going to cost some money. If you don't have some money, um, there are groups out there that are offering um, tremendous financing options as well. Some of the big major players right now, if, if you opened up a new business line of credit or personal line of credit with companies like Chase, City, Amex, Discover, they're offering 0% introductory financing for 18 months. So in essence, you could go ahead and achieve a line of let's say 10 to $20,000 that you can utilize for your business. And it's as good as free money right now that you can implement in and that might get you going further down the line. So Advertising with dollars spreads more awareness to get more eyeballs on you and your brand once you're set up and in a position to receive. So uh, I know we had a huge show today. I urge everybody to go back through. And uh, if you weren't taking notes, write down a bunch of these ideas and expand on it. Um, we're here every single week, most of the time, if our lives aren't crazy and busy, to go ahead and help put these knowledge nuggets in your brain so that you're blessed and unstoppable. So, But you guys can do it. I just say stay active. Um, be critical about your time, release the energy vampires and just go to war and uh, make sure your attitude is right before you start taking action. Don't don't go into this half assed and half heartedly at all whatsoever. You have mm -hmm. to commit to change and go do it and implement these awesome, cool strategies. And if you guys need any help, call Gene because he knows people. He does. Gene's a connector. I do like that. Nice. Nick, takeaways, my friend. Unique selling proposition. What makes you different? What's your secret sauce? and your database is your business um think about highly leveraged connections that you can make in the next 12 months who are five to ten people that can possibly give you five to ten deals each we talked about the divorce attorneys you know those type of connections school board you know coaches of a baseball team people that have that connect with a lot of people in your market you should probably be really good friends with and then be the guy that knows a guy like Gene. Damn. Dropping hammer. I like it. All right. Bald Ninja, you're up. Give me your takeaways. Be like me. Just like, <laughs> just <laughs> just like they both just said. No. I now I'm going to have to wear that t-shirt, Gino. Yeah, you should. You should already be. I'm converting people left and right to the easy look here. Um, <laughs> this to me is a three-step process, and it doesn't have to be super um, difficult, right? So why don't you tell me who said this? <laughs> when people are fear, when people are fearful and I'm paraphrasing, I'm greedy. When people are greedy, I become fearful. Anybody mm. know who that is? <coughs> Nobody. Can't wait to hear. Sanders? 
No, <laughs> Colonel Sanders. Get the food off your brain. <laughs> Popeye's trip today. <laughs> that is Warren Buffett. And and I always say to people, that's how you should approach marketing in a lot of cases. Like when the market's saturated with the same type of advertising, why are you thank you, Antonio? I'm glad somebody's listening. Um when when the market's saturated with the same exact type of marketing, you got to come up with a new way to market, right? When when people are running because things are going to get tight, I had a conversation with one of the top mortgage brokers today in my area, and he was like, look, I have all my content ready to go. It's all lined up. I don't have to do anything different. Now all I got to do is triple down on the spend, right? So step one, when people are fearful, jump on it. And start marketing and advertising in spaces that you didn't, especially as times get tougher. You shouldn't be pulling back on marketing. You should be doing more marketing, mm -hmm. right? Um, the second but, part but, of that. But, but, but Gene, you don't have to pay a lot of money to do more marketing. You can be creative, no. right? That's what that means. So people hear that and they, and they freak out. Yeah. They're like, oh, fuck, I got to pay more money? Oh, well, shit. listen, in certain cases, I am talking about more money, but it's not something that's going to break your bank. Like if you're doing... If you're doing the right things, the ROI on it over a certain amount of time is going to far outweigh the amount you're spending on. I'm not saying you got to spend 10 grand a month on marketing, right. but there's there's ways to increase your your exposure with small dollars. But you shouldn't be stopping it. You should be if yes. you're doing a dollar a day now, do three dollars a day. Go ahead, Nick. Marketing marketing is also different than advertising. Yes. So we say market part of marketing is your unique selling proposition that you just have one central thing that you talk about all the time, whether it's on a podcast or an email or a text message or a coffee or a lunch. marketing advertising is spending dollars to add to that marketing. There you go. Right. Expose mm -hmm. like the that. brand, expose the marketing. Yeah. I like it. And, and really there's ultimately the, the goal in my world of that is to strike up conversations with more people. Right. And I'm not talking about, huge conversations. What I mean is the, if I market to more people, I should have more lunches with more people. And if I go in and lead with information and I'm dropping nuggets and assets into their world with no expectation of anything in return, stuff is going to come back karmatically very quickly. So step up your game from the marketing and advertising space, get out in front of more people, hold more conversations with people, give them your undivided attention, put the phone down, when I say put the phone down, I don't mean put it down like this so it buzzes on the table. Turn it off and put it in your pocket so it's gone. Give them your undivided attention. Find mm -hmm. out how you can help them. That's not, not hey, by the way, I do this. This is what I want you to do. Tell me how I can help you. We're having lunch. What's, what's heavy in your world right now? What's a pain point for you? Let me see if I can help you in any single way. And then you get up to leave. You give the bro hug and they go, what can I do for you? And you go, nothing yep. at all. You know I'm in real estate. If you know anybody, call, have them call me. Simple conversations, the more of those you're going to have. Hand, this is still a hand-to-hand -hand combat sport. Close contact, right? You got to yeah. be there. Do it, do it, do it. Get more conversations. See, Sarge <laughs> pumping himself up right now. I see he's talking to the, he's talking to the wolf. Is he yelling at the wolf? <laughs> that <laughs> poor <laughs> wolf. Uh, got love love it, him. Oh, yeah. Gino, you got me all fired up. I'm good, go. Fired. <laughs> Three simple things, baby. That's oh. it. <laughs> I love it to pieces. You know what I was thinking as you guys were talking on takeaways? There's something that I've always wanted to try. I've never got around to trying it. Um, and this is, so there's two of them. So here's two different additional ideas, which just popped in my brain real fast. We had, what are we at? We're at like 27 now for ideas. Well, and this is what they can chop up. And this is why we problem. call it a five plus show, bro. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. true. Let's so go. Here's, Keep what, value. What is the world's smallest billboard? everybody looks at their phone card nope nope oh your uh your business card nope mm, what's the question. world's smallest billboard that everybody looks at uh, your face fortune cookies ladies and gentlemen oh you no get you can get fortune custom for custom made messages on fortune cookies. Now I've done this and I go into my local Chinese shop and I gave them to, to, to the, to the, to the owners. I'm like, I'll give you 50,000 you know, custom, you know, fortune cookies. So that'll take a, a, a line item off of your budget. Would wait, that wait, be wait, okay wait. with you? You Veronica, Veronica, we need mind. another slide about Greg's fortune cookies. You just blew my mind. Every fortune cookie says, you should sell your house with Greg McDaniel on the inside. Yes, exactly. Is that taking advantage of people? But no, 
And then on the other side, you give them like the standard lotto numbers to make them feel like they're lucky because they oh, open it up. Man. That's so funny. And it just so happens that all the lotto numbers is your cell phone number. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what, if you, let... what if you did that for Ooh. Halloween? What if you gave away fortune cookies for Halloween, custom fortune cookies? Dude, do it. I mean, you know, someone spin up their computer really quick and go to custom fortune cookies, and then you can look at the cost. They're so <laughs> small. I'm, Here's I'm a second playing, idea. Bro. Here's a second idea that really jumped in front of my face. Now, this goes for, I mean, I'm always behind driving in the neighborhoods, the, the guys who do the lawn, lawn, lawn care for the homeowners in the communities, right? Guess what? They're majority of the time, they're all carrying a trailer with all their tools of the trade behind them. What is the greatest place you could, in traffic, you could be having your face and information be stared at without ever having to deal with parking it, insuring it, yeah, nothing. Dude. That's a great idea, especially lawn care guys are in the same neighborhood that you want to be in. Like exactly, that's a great one. And you 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 pay them a hundred bucks a month, uh, or you offer to fill fill each of their vehicles up once a month. All they all they have to do is just make sure that that's on the back of their truck. You you make them, they bolt them down, bam! All of a sudden, you got like twenty freaking little mobile you know signs running around town. In the neighborhoods that you already want to work in dude they got fortune cookies with sprinkles on them i had no idea the fortune cookie market was this big that's what i'm Jeez. telling you okay, may, yeah, may says neighbor. may says if you give fortune cookies for halloween you're gonna piss off a lot of kids yep. however end up in the trash <laughs> however the parents have to check the the candy yeah. and fortune cookies for the kiddos so you oh and they all come individually wrapped just like you'd get in a store look so, for yeah. 70 cents a cookie is worth a shot right i used, <laughs> i used to work with a guy that they um that used to he was a master at pulling the fortune cookies out and sliding them back in so he would go and get them and then what? it would he would type up his own and it would be messages to his wife about sex acts she would perform with her husband later in the night yes, they would say, yes, you will yes. do x y and z with your husband and it took her like eight times they would go get chinese food till she realized he was <laughs> amazing <laughs> smart man smart yes uh, yeah oh my god Okay. In all honesty, my takeaway is going to be um, is, is May's comment in regards to what kind of lifestyle changes have taken place. Has there been a death, a divorce, you know, job transfer, in, in, in empty nesters, you know, something along those lines. I'm going to have to get that script down a little bit deeper, but um, I loved that freaking line. I think it's such a great twist on just like, so, you know, are you thinking about selling? Who do you know think, uh, that's thinking about selling? Blah, blah, blah. It's pretty antiquated at this point, but asking what kind of life shift or life change that has taken place how can i assist all of a sudden the, it's a whole new world and you get to talk to a whole lot of people that you may not have in the past so all right guys and gals i believe um we are we are looking to do our safety words instead of colors for the bow in the show today is that yes. correct? yes okay this is gonna get fucking weird safety words i got one for you oh please don't <laughs> all right what is it Save the clock tower. That that's <laughs> that's back that's to the future. A lot in the how are you gonna so this is an actual tribute <laughs> to back to the future. So incorporate <laughs> save the clock tower into your safety words next time. <laughs> okay. I'd like to talk to Mrs. Wolf about that one. Yeah, yeah. Gotta, yeah we gotta see I'm going pretty on creative, here. Gino. <laughs> We're gonna save that clock tower. <laughs> Nick, what's your what's your safety word? My safety word is funnel cake because I don't like them. Oh, funnel cake. <laughs> yeah, how are you going to throw that one in there? <laughs> oh, my God. Gene, follow that one. Uh, if it's super simple. I don't have one because I'm a grown-ass man and I don't need one. Oh, he just takes it all, baby. Yeah. He takes it all. <laughs> oh. Oh, Damn, I left just... that one out there for you. Here's the softball, Nikki. <laughs> oh. I can't even come up with anything cool or fun for a safety word. I don't know, cream, the world, cream the pie. world is better for that, believe me. Yeah, yeah. it probably it yeah, probably yeah, yeah. is. I'm just gonna be no comment. All right. Anyways, all jokes aside, guys, guys. Um, we, ladies and gentlemen, we love you to pieces. There's absolutely no way that the three of us clowns or four of us clowns can come on here and hang out with you guys and really enjoy our time being together, bringing some creative thought to you guys. Hopefully, from the ideas, you'll find one or two that you can put into action today. Kind of put some more, you know, dollars in your bank in your bank account, put some more clothes on your back. 
maybe put your kids through uh, through a private school, whatever the fuck you want to do with it. Hopefully there's some value here that you can put into your life. We are here to serve you. We're here to bring value to you. We cannot do it without you. Um, so before we go, uh, we aren't going to put a bow in the show on this thing. We're going to put our safety words to keep the concerned citizens safe. We have save the clock tower. Save that to save that. Say, say that very fast all the time. Then photo cake. Because yeah, Nick does not like it. Now, Gene's the man of all men, and he just doesn't have anything. He'll just sit there and just um, take a he beating. Just takes it. He just, just takes, takes it. It, it just takes it. No matter what. <laughs> I think mine's gonna be stapler. Gene is down. Sarge, Sarge, I need you to. I need you to get your people to go back to this episode and just pull out the clips of him going funnel cake. Save yeah. the clock tower. <laughs> <laughs> Could you do that, please? Consider it done. Rolling the dice on that one. Okay, so my safety word is going to be stapler. I don't know why. I just I'm looking at the stapler. There it is, guys. There's your show. Very weird, very fun, very out of the box. Take it, run with it, make it yours. Give us some uh, feedback on what you guys like about it. Go ahead and hashtag us on any area. Uh, any well, tag us in any kind of platform you're on. Give us a comment and review. Even if you don't like us, that's okay. We still want to hear from you. We love you. The pieces. And until next time, peace out, ninjas. We gone. <laughs>